Hey everyone, it's Steven here, and I'm bringing you a video that has been on my YouTube to-do list for quite some time. It's also an item that was on my top five tech wish list video I posted a few months ago, which I'll leave linked in the description down below if you're curious. So this pair of headphones, the M50Xs, has quite a reputation, especially in the YouTube content creator realm, and I originally got wind of them after watching MKBHD's video praising them as the best headphones under $200. There's also no shortage of video reviews of these headphones out there, but I figured I'd throw my hat in the ring anyway and give you guys my thoughts. Now recently I was on Twitter and saw that Detroit Borg, who runs one of my favorite YouTube channels out there, was selling his M50Xs for a nice discounted price. He said they were barely used, so I figured what the hell, I'll take them off his hands and try them out once and for all. Now, as I've mentioned, these headphones have been covered and detailed quite a bit, but I do have somewhat of a unique perspective. I've never tried the original M50s, which these are a modification of. The new feature added in is the detachable cable on the left ear capsule. Also, the leather is confirmed to be softer on the ear pads and headband. Most reviews also stated the bass was slightly increased and the treble was brought down a bit. Oh, and the M50X logo that's etched into the sides. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. I'm also someone who up until now has been using the HD25s from Sennheiser, which are also highly regarded in the audio world. They're both proven, time-tested designs that are in the unofficial audiophile hall of fame. I absolutely love these Sennheiser headphones and use them almost every day for all kinds of tasks, but they do become a little uncomfortable in lengthy content creation sessions. Like the M50Xs, they are a professional level headphone coming in at a similar price point, but they have a few significant differences in their designs and sound. If you'd like to see a detailed comparison between the two, let me know by hitting that like button or with a comment down below. So I'd like to knock out some of the mundane details of these headphones before I get into the more juicy details of their sound. Audio-Technica provides you with three audio cables, a matching black leather pouch for transport, and a quarter inch headphone jack adapter. The audio cables are a three meter coiled cable, a three meter straight cable, and a thin 1.2 meter straight cable. None of these cables provide mic or remote controls for smartphones, which personally doesn't bother me. The jacks, however, are very smartphone friendly and I had no problem inserting them into my iPhone. Here's the technical specs. You've got 45 millimeter large aperture drivers with rare earth magnets and copper clad aluminum wire voice coils. The M50Xs are on-ear headphones, otherwise known as circumoral, meaning the ear cups completely surround your ears. You also have 90 degree swiveling ear cups. Now I just wanted to touch on this for a second. This is actually a really great feature. You can do one ear monitoring or when you have the headphones around your neck, you can turn the ear cups inward or outward, which provides a little breathing room. And when they face outward, you can still hear the audio in case your ears get a little fatigued. You can also fold the headphones inward, which further adds to their portability. The sensitivity rating is at around 99 decibels compared to the 120 decibel rating of the Sennheiser HD25s. Now this was actually significant, as I noticed at higher volumes, the M50Xs did occasionally distort a little bit as compared to the HD25s. As far as impedance, the rating is at 38 ohms. And in case you're not familiar with this term, it's referring to how much power is required to deliver high audio levels. And in the case of the M50Xs, the rating is low, so it works well with most equipment like your cell phone or other mobile devices. I wanted to talk a little bit about the styling of these headphones. I'd characterize them as decent and professional slash utilitarian looking. Not bad or anything, just not a modern Beats kind of looking headphone. They have this sort of chunky, timeless looking design, a definitive studio monitor look. I found the logo and accompanying silver ring to be a very tasteful and minimal look. It's offered in three different colors black, white, and a limited edition blue and tan version. I personally preferred the black one for its look and knowing it wouldn't show as much wear over time. As far as reliability, these are known as very durable and there aren't any documented failure reports out there, but they feel pretty solid. 
They don't have a bulletproof build or anything. You have to be somewhat cautious with them. I'm a little skeptical of all the plastic connector parts potentially breaking over time, but you just don't see or hear about people reporting these things falling apart. It is nice knowing that you can replace a broken cable. Unlike the old design that had the wire connected directly to the ear cup, so if that failed, you can already begin to imagine what your options were. The build quality is as good as everyone raves about. The headphones feel fantastic in your hand. The Audio-Technica was exceptional in their attention to detail in the design, hence the longevity of the product on the market over the years. For example, the metal section of the headphone size adjuster, which features level markers and individual clicks that can be felt and heard as you go up and down. The cables are pretty robust as well. The leather of the ear pads and headband have a pleasant texture to them that feels good against your head. With the ear cups, I definitely noticed their presence against the side of my face, which is an adjustment after using on-ear headphones for so long. I found these headphones to be pretty comfortable, not significantly more comfortable than my Sennheisers, but address my issue of ear fatigue. I can keep these on for about an hour or two longer than the HD25s. They're not a bed of clouds type of experience some reviewers may have you believe they are. There's still a certain amount of clamp force on your head, but that's a trade-off for getting good sound and decent isolation from outside noise. As far as the weight, they come in at 285 grams or 10 ounces. I thought they had a little bit of a presence on my head, but overall they're reasonable and won't weigh you down over time at all. So on to that juicy topic of sound I mentioned earlier. So I'll just get it right out of the way. These headphones provide very good sound. Before I listened to them myself, I read some reviews that mentioned that the bass was very good and extended. Some people would say it's boomy, while others have said it was lacking. To my ears, the bass was very good. It shines on tracks that emphasize bass and won't distort or get muddy, but they're not boomy or rattling, just very clean and defined bass. As far as the mids go, to me they sound good and clean, although some have said they lack body, but I personally didn't notice. Now the highs have been described as clear and detailed, but also shimmery and metallic. I found them to be just fine and weren't overly harsh and sounded just right. Also, I found them to have a bit of a wider sound providing slightly more detail than an on-ear headphone, and of course that's going to be true compared to earphones as well. People's interpretations of a headphone's sound can vary quite a bit, and there's a lot of factors that go into that, and it can be very subjective. So I decided to include an audio snippet of the headphones for you guys that I recorded using my voiceover mic, the Audio-Technica AT2035. The clip is about a minute long and features a song that has a good mix of booming bass drums and a loud snare. So I realize that's not gonna give you the experience of what the headphone is truly like, but it does give you some idea of the level of quality audio you get from these. Overall, I of course love the headphones, and it's true. They're the Swiss Army knife of headphones in some ways, and are a great value for their price at around $170, give or take. I love how versatile they are, they provide great comfort and build quality, and the sound, of course. They're a great option for audio enthusiasts and people like myself that also use them for audio applications. I will be a bit of a contrarian here and say I don't think of them as the best headphones for under $200, but one of the best absolute values for their price. 
I've also experienced a sub $200 headphone prior to these that was also very good and fit all my needs while having a similar level of audio quality in just a slightly different form factor. Despite that, of course, I'd recommend them to anyone looking for a solid pair of headphones. So that's pretty much it, but before I get out of here, I wanted to say thanks for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out some of my other videos and keep an eye out for me in your sub box as I'll have plenty more coming your way. I'll see you in the next one.